Okay, so far we had this hack visualization just to debug if our light position is moving around correctly. And here I have a light position moving, and the red is when I'm within one unit, and the green is when I'm within two units inside my fragment shader, right? So this is a piece of code that we have here. So now I want to change this to, to just do some more sensible calculation, right? So we have a we have a distance that we were calculating. Where's my R? I didn't want to. I don't want to get rid of that, just my if statement. So I have a distance that I was calculating from, from the light vector. And uh, what if we just add a 1 over r squared? So we're not going to do any real lighting yet. We're just going to do a 1 over r squared fall off from this light and see what happens. Oh, so now we have something that looks a little bit more like lighting happening in the scene. Now we still don't have any of these cosine terms for the normal or these kinds of things happening. But we have something that basically says there's a light. When you get closer to this light, then things get illuminated. And when you get further away from the light, then, then things uh, aren't illuminated, right? And it seems like we have some kind of lighting. And since we're doing this in the fragment shader, it's happening per pixel, and we can get nice smooth lighting uh, across our surface. But this is not the lighting model that we want to calculate. This is somehow um, too, too simple of a thing. And we'd like to be able to have uh, such that the shading on our object is in fact dependent upon the, the angle to, to where the light is, right? And right now, if I move my light really far away, then, then of course I don't get anything because I have this strong fall. -off. Okay, so I've made some adjustments here to try to get diffuse lighting. So first of all, in our light vector, I flip these around. I'm, I'm taking the light position minus the vertex position so that I have a vector pointing away from the, the vertex position. Um, the other things will stay the same because they were only relying on distance. I'm going to normalize that light vector because remember everything that we want to do when we're calculating um, these dot products, we want to have normalized vectors. We had passed in the normal vector as a varying, right? Remember these things, the, the normal vector came as an attribute into our vertex shader, but then all we did was just copy it over to a varying so that it comes down to us in our, in our fragment shader. So I have the normal, so I can just calculate in dot L, right? I have a dot product function. I just calculate in dot X L, and I want to have a max of zero just so that I don't go past what's black. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to take whatever my fragment color was from my textures or whatever was I doing, and I'm going to multiply that fragment color times in dot L. So in dot L is going to live in a range of zero to one. Uh, and then I'm going to set the, because I didn't really want to reduce the alpha, I'm going to set the alpha back to one. So let's go take a look at what's going on. We have our light moving back and forth, and it looks a little bit strange. It's not a lot of light on the scene. Well, part of this reason is because our light is fairly far back. So let me go over here, and let me move my light forward so that it's in front of the object, closer to our eye. And this is how we're used to seeing things. So this probably looks more like the lighting that we're expecting to see. So I think the question is, is this behaving the way we want it to? Well, certainly this side of the sphere is lit when it's here, and then it moves over here, and the the sphere is lit differently. We put it behind. We see we're lighting from the back of the sphere. We don't have any ambient yet, so this is all black. So uh, what if we get our light all the way down onto the floor? Let me, let me see what's going to happen if I do this. Now, this is a little bit weird. Why is it really bright right next to it, but then not so bright in other directions? Now, I've taken away my 1 over r squared fall off, so it has nothing to do with that. But remember, that we're looking at the n dot l vector. And so this light is very close to the floor. So when I'm close to the spot where the light is, my light can be aligned with that normal vector. But when the light is over here on this side, and I'm looking at a point way over here, then my normal to my surface is pointing straight up, but my light vector is pointing nearly 90 degrees away. And of course, that's, that cosine term goes to zero. So this is behaving, again, how we would, how we would expect um, in terms of the lighting model that, that we have. So if we put our light up in some reasonable position where it's not right next to a surface, then we're getting some lighting that makes sense, although we're a little dark on the back sides of, of objects. Of course, if we come and look at this thing from the back, we're going to have less lighting on the, on the, there shouldn't be any lighting on the back of this surface, and it gets towards black. And if I put my light all the way against this back wall, you know, let me get a little bit away so we can see what we're doing. And then I push it down to, towards the floor and I get behind my sphere, then of course, 
is not because it's behind, it's because it's back facing. We don't have any occlusion. There's no notion of um, things blocking and causing shadows, but this these normals are not facing the right way, so we, so we get it dark. So we still need to add some ambient to take care of this. Okay, here I've reorganized a little bit to get ambient. So I've taken this in.l and I've stuck it in a new variable diffuse. Um, and then for ambient, we just take our fragment color times a constant value. And then our final fragment color is going to be diffuse plus ambient, uh, setting alpha to, to 1. And so here, so here we have this. And now the backside of our, of our sphere hasn't gone all the way to black. So things are behaving a little bit more we, like we would expect them to, to behave, um, given, the, given the lighting model that we have. So now that we have some lighting, I think it's also time to go remove the fake lighting that we have. Remember in our cube, we had some fake lighting. So we're going to go get rid of that now. So I've now taken out the fake lighting. So remember inside of our render um, of our cube, we, we for each face, you know, when I got to the right hand side of the face, I was multiplying times 0.8 or the left hand side is 0.7, just to have some fake lighting on the cube. I don't need that anymore because I now have some other lighting that's letting me see what's going on. So I've just commented out all those lines. So that when I render my cube, I just pass through the true color of the of the cube, uh, so that it's everywhere the same. So one other little thing I want to point out: notice that my light cube seems to be not illuminated. And remember, I set the color really high. So what's going on? Like, why is it getting not illuminated? It's only having ambient right now, and that's because the light is inside that cube, right? The point position is inside the cube. And since my normals are pointing out, which is the opposite of what I want. If I want to be painted, pointed towards the light, I'm just going to play a game of flipping this cube inside out. Same like I did with this cube that's surrounding my box. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to make my light cube to have a, have a negative scale so that it flips inside out. And now, now my light's got a bright yellow again, which is, which is the behavior that I wanted to, wanted to have on my scene. Okay, so now we're going to try to add specular. And clearly, I still have some bug. I've got my light moving around, and I've got my specular highlight, but it's on the wrong side. But anyway, let's go see how we've been adding it, and then we'll clean up that bug in a, in a little bit. So we need to get a reflection vector. So remember, the reflection vector um, is the light vector reflected around the normal vector. And GLS will provide this a function, so I've gone ahead and used it in order to get the reflection vector. And the I vector, the direction from the camera, is from the camera position minus the vertex position. So this is analogous to the way the light position was minus the vertex position. So now we're looking at the camera to the, to the vertex. Now I didn't have this camera before. So we'll talk about in a minute where, where that came from. I had to go add it and, and get it hooked up. Um, and then our specular is the dot product between the I and the reflection vector. Um, with the max zero, of course, and then we've raised it to some power, and I've chosen a specular exponent of 10 in this case. So then um, we can just add together our specular, our diffuse, and our ambient. Uh, and I've uh, forgotten something here. I've just taken the specular directly, but I probably want to use, just like I did with the diffuse, use the specular and modify the underlying diffuse color. But that's OK for, for now. I'm just directly applying it. So it's not going to copy the color of the underneath. It's going to just be a, a white highlight. So where did I get all of the variables I needed? The main variable I needed to add here was I needed to get the camera position. So uh, just like all of our uniforms, we passed in the light position. We can pass in the camera position. And in order to use that, we have to hook it up with our connect variables to GLSL. So here I've added my global variable. I've added it to GL, um, connect variables to GLSL. And down here in my render all shapes, in the same position where I was passing the light to GLSL, I'm going to pass the camera to, to GLSL. Um, and I had it in a, in a camera class. And so I'm pulling up the information in order to pass that in. So we're close. We almost have it, uh, except for. I still have a bug that's got my specular highlight on the back side. OK, I got my specular highlight on the right side. Turns out I need a negative in, terms, in front of this light. So why do I need that negative there? So if we go over and look at this visualization, 
my light vector was pointing out. And the reflect function takes the incoming vector and makes this outgoing vector. So I just had to flip around the direction of my light vector and get, in order to get the right thing back. Now, it's a little bit hard to tell if my specular highlight is doing the right thing because I have an animated light going. I mean, it looks like it's OK. I've got something um, on my sphere here. And when I move the light around, I'm getting some kind of highlight on my sphere. But the thing that really separates specular highlights from uh, diffuse lighting is the fact that it's dependent upon the eye position. And I'm not really moving the eye right now. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go shut off uh, my animation on my light so that I can move around my eye and see what's going on. Going on. OK, I've made a couple of changes. One, I changed the specular exponent so my spot for my specular is much smaller than it was before. Second, I, I've stuck my texture back on my sphere so that I can see what's going on. So um, as we move around, now that, the texture, now that there's a texture on the sphere, we can see that definitely this dot is moving around relative to the texture when we move the light. But um, it should also happen when we move the camera. So let's take a look here. As we move the camera in, we can see that this dot is moving across the texture, right? So now it's on the on the blue line, and when I back up, we can see this dot has moved over to another blue line. So this is the behavior we expect from specular highlights. They're dependent upon the eye position, and this is something that's not true for diffuse to, for diffuse lighting. So it looks like I have my specular highlight working in the right way. So just as another thing, I, I don't like the specular highlights on my walls. I want my specular highlight on my sphere. I actually don't mind it on the floor so much, but I find it distracting on these walls. So this is as if I was inside of a shiny box where everything's reflecting. And I want my box to be more diffuse colored and my other objects to have this shiny highlight. So um, I could pass in some additional variables. I'm going to just uh, hack a little bit and say that my textured objects are shiny because those are the two that I, I mentioned. But the right thing to do would be to pass some other kind of information per object that kept track of this. OK, the last thing I've done is adjust my light and the motion that it has a little bit and the specular exponent and the colors and things so that I can easily see that there is, in fact, lighting on this scene. Right? As my light moves around, we can see the diffuse side uh, of this changes, and we can see that the specular highlight is moving around. Um, and so it's, it's easy for me to see that everything's working. So if you had set up your scene so that our graders can actually see that your lighting is working, um, that, that would be great.